Christmas Eve 1978, Atlanta Stadium. For the first time in 18 years, the Philadelphia Eagles are playing a meaningful game in December. They are in the playoffs against the Atlanta Falcons. After three periods, the Eagles lead 13 0 But all season long, the Falcons have been a fourth quarter team, a fact that concerns the Eagles coaching staff. Defense, we got a 13-point lead. You gotta play like it's 0-0, and that's meaning flat out and execution of our defense. The only thing you gotta do is ask yourself, can we shut them out the rest of the way? The Atlanta Falcons, the miracle team of 1978 have one more miracle left. Two fourth period touchdowns give them a 14-13 victory while eliminating the Eagles from further playoff competition. Yet what mattered most was not that the Eagles had lost, but that they had been there at all. 1978 was a year of rebirth for professional football in one of the great old NFL cities. After 12 years of frustration, the Philadelphia Eagles finally broke through with a winning record. They accomplished this with players who had been characterized as the wilted flowers of pro football, low draft picks and other teams' discards. But like the little engine that could, the Eagles refused to believe they couldn't. And in the end, they did. Their first winning season since 1966. This team captured their city's imagination. They proved to themselves that they were good enough. And most important, the Philadelphia Eagles, football's most conspicuous losers, were losers no more. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, famous for the Liberty Bell, Blue Law, soft pretzels, and losing football teams. A true Philadelphia fan learns to boo before he learns to speak. And yet, each Sunday, they turn out many sitting in seats they inherited from their parents. You know, our fans come from great stock. Uh, you talk about our bloodlines, the Continental Congress, the Army. Uh, here was a team that was at least uh, a three touchdown underdog to the British and yet they still were able to pull off the biggest win of all and uh, and they'll fight you they'll fight you they'll tell you if you're not doing a good job and what they'll do is they'll boo us but they won't let anybody else boo us and that's what makes them different when they're there they're going to help us win the game in 1976 owner Leonard Toes and Jim Murray brought in a new coach he hailed from Napa Valley California the son of an auto mechanic and became coach of a team in considerable disrepair. His name was Dick Vermeil. Dick Vermeil looks like Audie Murphy and he uh, coaches like John Wayne. I mean, he's really a piece of work. And, and he took a team, uh, a, a group of players that maybe didn't have the innate talent of some of our competition and got every ounce out of them. Our thing is uh, everybody's somebody. And, and most people don't know how well they can do something until they really test themselves. And it, if you work real hard and invest a lot of hours in getting better and you're an unselfish person and you do what you're asked to do as hard as you can do it every day on the practice field, well, Sunday it becomes just part of your personality. The first test of 1978, the Los Angeles Rams. In terms of the game, guys, uh, we've worked hard to get to where we are in a position that we can play a good football team and beat them. Now, we haven't beaten the Rams yet. But that's what we've worked to do. That's what we have prepared to do, to beat the Rams. Now, we may not be able to do it, but we won't know until we've played four quarters of football. And they sure as hell hadn't beaten us yet. The one thing I want to remind you, 
in Eagle football in any game for 16 weeks. No one player is gonna receive all the credit when we win, and I'll guarantee you that no one player is gonna receive the blame when we lose. Scoreboard counts the same for everybody, and that's how we're gonna play. I want you to relax and have some fun. Get after it. A breakdown in the kicking game gave the Rams an easy touchdown and a 13-0 lead. But instead of quitting, the Eagles rallied for a pair of fourth quarter touchdowns, one an electrifying 57-yard punt return by Wally Henry that put Philadelphia ahead 14-13. Despite this comeback, an Eagle victory was not to be. The Rams kicked a field goal to win the game in the final seconds, 16-14. It was a new season, but the same old story. Guys, we were close, and we almost got it done. Almost doesn't count. You give them a block punt for a touchdown, you can't win. That Los Angeles Rams team has as much talent as anybody in football. And I'll tell you, you don't have to be embarrassed about your performance. I'm proud of you. I'm disappointed for you. I'm disappointed for you. I'm disappointed for the coaching staff and Mr. Toast and everybody else. But damn it, we're a good football team. And don't let anybody tell you different. And so Vermeil and his coaching staff began the task of restoring confidence and faith to the Eagles. A task made easier with the emergence of running back Wilbert Montgomery. Against Washington, he scored four touchdowns and had a fifth call back by a penalty. By year's end, he became the first Philadelphia back to gain 1,000 yards since 1949. His 1,220 yards rushing in a season was a new team record. He led the club in scoring and was named to the Pro Bowl. All this in only his second pro season. Montgomery's running mate, number 35, Mike Hogan, had his finest year as well. Hogan's heroic, spearheaded, an amazing fourth quarter comeback in Baltimore that saw the Eagles rally from a 14-0 deficit to win 17-14. By October, Philadelphia had shown marked improvement, but one of their goals in 1978 was to defeat a club of playoff caliber. In week four, they achieved that goal. The opponents were the Miami Dolphins, and the stars were the men of the offensive line. Morris, Peoples, Key, Sizemore, George, Lucan, and pro bowler Stan Walters totally dominated the line of scrimmage. The Philadelphia offense held on to the ball for over 40 minutes and emerged with a convincing 17-3 victory over the playoff-bound Dolphins. But the game that finally showed even the skeptics that the Eagles were legitimate contenders came in week seven against unbeaten Washington. Before the contest was three minutes old, free safety Deke Sanders, number 26, stole a redskin pass and returned it for a touchdown. Wilbert Montgomery broke a 10-10 tie in the fourth quarter with a 12-yard scoring run. It served notice to all that this would be a season of laughter, not tears in Philadelphia.
autumn 1978 saw the rekindling of an old love affair between a town and a team. The Eagles were a perfect match for Philadelphia, the underdog of American cities. The blue collar lunch pail division of the NFL. Few superstars, just hard workers. Men like rookie linebackers Reggie Wilkes and Ray Phillips. There was number 68, Dennis Bigfoot Harrison, a fourth round draft pick who blended well with defensive line mates Carl Harrison, number 78, and nose tackle Charlie Johnson, number 65. There was safety Randy Logan and linebackers John Bunting and defensive captain Frank LeMaster. In the secondary, there was wily veteran Bobby Howard at one corner, while the other was patrolled by Herman Edwards, number 46, the team's top interceptor with seven. Number 21, handyman John Shara, held for kicks, return punts, and played both safety and quarterback. There were runners like Jim Betterson, Cleveland Franklin, and Billy Campfield, number 37, who filled in admirably when Wilbert Montgomery was injured. Similarly, when a fractured rib sidelined tight end Keith Crefley, number 86 Richard Osborne proved to be more than an adequate replacement. These excellent performances by rookies and reserves were among the season's most pleasant surprises. Surprising to no one was the performance of linebacker Bill Berge. He gave the Eagles outstanding play every Sunday and leadership every moment. He was named All-Pro for the third consecutive season and was voted to the Pro Bowl for the fourth time in his career. On defense, the Eagles relied on Bill Berge. On offense, the man was Harold Carmichael. Only three NFC teams ran the ball more often in 1978 than the Eagles. But this did not stop Carmichael from enjoying his most productive season. He earned all pro status by catching 55 passes for over 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns. And he achieved all this against defenses designed specifically to stop him. Carmichael has now caught at least one pass in 96 consecutive games and could eclipse the NFL record of 105 next season. The remarkable aspect of this streak is that Carmichael has been able to play in 96 straight games, for he is frequently the target of abuse by opposing secondaries. But come hell or high water, Carmichael will always be there because he's that kind of player and that kind of man. Berge and Carmichael are natural leaders. Quarterback Ron Jaworski has all the qualities to lead as well, but he is still learning his craft, a sometimes painful process. Richard was there! Funny! <laughs> You might as well, guys, you might as well write this. I am not going to let the fans substitute my quarterback. They've been doing that here for years, and they have never come up with a quarterback that can win for them. I've got one that can win for us. They can boo all they want. I'm not going to take him out of there. That's the only way a guy matures is to sit in there and throw nine innings. Ron Jaworski, now come here. Come here, now come here. I want you to hear me when I say this. You never have to worry about me jerking you. I know it. All right. Don't worry about these guys. Now. Ron Jaworski is Dick Vermeil's pet project. He sees in Jaworski a man still young enough to be Philadelphia's quarterback for years to come. 
based on the results thus far, Vermeil has invested his time wisely. 1978 was a season of hard work and dedication, plus an occasional favoring smile from Dame Fortune. On November 19th at Giant Stadium, a moment occurred that will forever be known as the miracle of the Meadowlands. New York led 17-12 and had the ball with barely a minute to play. What happened next would be a fragment in time to be forever crystallized in the hearts and minds of Eagle fans. Under 30 seconds left of the game. From here on in, Pizarczyk can just fall on the football and there is nothing the Eagles can do. And Pizarczyk fumbles the football. It's picked up by Herbert Edwards. The Eagles won 1917, but more important was the fact that they were still playing it hard in the final seconds, even though the cause seemed absolutely hopeless. Armed with an 8-5 record and a four-game winning streak, the Eagles journeyed to the North Country for a match with the Minnesota Vikings. The frigid climate had often paralyzed Viking opponents, but for the Eagles, the first 30 minutes was a sleigh ride. Ron Jaworski threw two touchdown passes to Harold Carmichael and a third to Charlie Smith. And Wilbert Montgomery broke off a 36-yarder for a fourth touchdown to give the Eagles a 27-14 halftime lead. But the lead would not stand up as the Vikings scored two second-half touchdowns to edge Philadelphia in the final seconds 28-27. It was a low point in the season that dipped even lower the following week when the defending world champion Dallas Cowboys routed the Eagles 31-13. done a great job coaching this year and they've been a good football team all year and uh, this is probably the most disappointing game they've had I'm talking about a one-sided game because they've been in every ball game emotionally what was it like for you this afternoon well I'm an emotional intense guy and uh, I was drained I have been drained for about three or four weeks you know but uh, you just sort of run out of gas and uh, and so it came down to the season's final week could this Eagle team succeed where a dozen before had failed? Could they find the strength and resolve to fulfill their dream of finishing as a winner? Thinking about being a winner. Being a winner. We just feel one. So, guys, 12 years, 12 years have gone by since the Eagles have been a winner. We're going to come out winners today. You work like winners. You've played like winners. Sure, we've won a couple we should have lost. But I'll tell you something else. We've lost a few we should have won. We're right where we ought to be, playing for the first winning season since 1966. Hey, God love all of you. Hey, all right. Get tight. Get tight. Hey, good. Hi, everybody. This is Merrill Reese and Jim Barniak in Veterans Stadium. And what a big Sunday this is. Sunday, December the 17th, the final home game of the regular season. Hand off to Montgomery, who goes up the middle. First down yardage. 40, 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. Montgomery to the 25, and pulls out of the 18. Wilbur Montgomery. 
first and goal for the Eagles. They're at the Giants' seven. To Montgomery, up the middle, touchdown, Eagles! Shara in the hole, Michelle for the extra point, and that has not been automatic. It's a low snap. He gets it up anyhow, and the kick is no good. It is no good. That wind just blow that extra point right out here? It ain't gonna make any difference, Coach. It isn't gonna make any difference. Get heat on that guy. Pizarca got a slant in. Intercepted. Intercepted by Frank Lamastro. Takes it in. And that could seal it up. That could do it right there. That could do it.